Hey guys, good to see you. I can't believe it's January 7th already. Four days to go. Four days until the Emerging Profits Ontario School launch. That's this Thursday. I don't know where the time is going. You know, it has been, um, wow, it's been, uh, I hope you guys had a great holiday, great Christmas, great New Year's, and hopefully you've had some time to like rest and settle and to, you know, just be with family, be with your loved ones. Hello, Kara Well, good to see you. You know, because it is, um, you know, 2024 going to be a powerful year and there are so many of us who are going, who are just about to take off like a rocket in this year. Thank you, Kara Welk. You like my red shirt, red in honor of Canada. You know, but this year has been, um, you know, I talked last time I came on Facebook Live, just about getting a little bit sick over the holidays. And, and I found myself in a place of forced rest where, you know, I couldn't do the family things and the plans and all the things that I had been expecting to do over Christmas. But there was just such a needfulness, and I feel like this is a like a real more corporate thing. There's been such a needfulness for us to like rest, settle, and recalibrate before we launch off into the new things that God has for us in 2024. Because this is, um, you know, the last three years have been, for a lot of us in many ways, um, have been very varying levels of traumatic, varying levels of disappointment, varying levels of, you know, frustrating and shifting. And then also very varying levels of like stepping into new things and, and into these new things. And so it's been such a time of massive transition that for a lot of us, it is shaken us to the very core. And so it's like, we're about to go into another season of like real, like significant transition. And so you know, to be ready and rested for what God is about to launch us off into. There's this needfulness for us to like settle, settle, find our center. And you know what, Kara, I see, I hear you there with the, like the warfare and the intensity. And you know, the picture that I was having just before getting on this was, you know, it was because <clears throat> there was a lot of stirring, a lot of things shifting in the atmosphere, a lot of swirl and I just really felt like you know sometimes the swirl you know it's like the wind and the storms if you picture yourself in a boat and it's like we've been in this like rocking boat in this middle of the storm and it's like you know often the um prophet is referred to the one who's like way up there on the mass like up there because they have the vision and they see and they see what's going on and they see the warfare and they see everything you know and so you know if the prophet you know is the one with the vision they they climb up there into the mast and they're looking out on the horizon but you know when you have a boat and there's a mast that's up in the air even just the littlest waves in the boat will make that mast that that high place you know, seems so extreme. And so sometimes when we're up there in that place, especially us who have prophetic vision, you know, we feel like we're getting tossed around and like, and sometimes it th it seems like things are so much worse in the middle of the storm than they actually are. And so what I kind of feel like this season has been, you know, and it's been for me, but I know it's not just for me, but it's kind of been this like, hey, come down from your position way up here and it's been this like descent down into, you know, the, the whole of the boat, like into that deep place. And it's been this time of really needing to come into the deep place and just settle in right next to Jesus into this place where, you know, the wind's not getting you and where you don't feel like you're being tossed around quite as much. And it's been this time of like really rest and recalibrate and coming in with Jesus into this safe place and just snuggling in beside him in the secret place, in the quietness. And this holiday season, this, this last couple of weeks, it's really been about that like rest in that time of like, there's been, it's almost like there's been a stillness and I just see it's like in this place, we haven't been feeling the waves and the storm, and there has just been this place of like protection in, in, in our place of intimacy. Just gonna say hello to a few of you guys. Josie Lavoy, hello. Scott LeBlanc, Sharon McGuire, hello. 
Thanks. And if you're, you, there, I know there's more of you guys watching. Just drop me a message. Let me know where you are tuning in from. But guys, so Kara, you're with me. You're feeling the transition. You're feeling the shift. You know, and there is this real, hello, Julianne, August. <laughs> there's been this real needfulness to go into this place of rest and settling because of what we know is coming. And so what is coming is different for each and every one of us. But this is a shifting, a transitioning, a launching year. This is a time of like really breaking in to new areas. And so for you, you have to ask yourself that question. Okay, what is the new area that God is bringing me into? What is the shift? What is the transition? And I just want to suggest that if you feel like, well, nothing is changing. My life is just the same old that it's been all year. Then maybe you might be missing the boat a little bit. And so ask Holy Spirit, what is the new thing that you have for me? You know, because a lot of us have felt the, um, in the midst of transition, there's been a lot of shuffling. There's been a lot of realignment. God has been removing people from our lives and he has been adding people from our lives. He's been, you know, removing some people from places. He's even been removing some people from jobs. Um, and, and for the very, purpose, like the very realignment of, uh, sorry, <laughs> I'm being distracted by Jody's comment, which I'm going to comment on, but thank you that, that, that I'm glowing, you know, but for the purpose. So I, I know that I know of multiple people who have actually been transitioned out of their jobs recently. And it's really, I see this as like the catalyst to catapult them into the next season. And so there's been, um, so just always remember that some of the most painful endings are the most beautiful new beginnings. And I know that for my own life that there, you know, some of the things, the transitions, um, you know, especially when you, you know, if you're working in a place for a long time and, it, and you get transitioned out or, um, you know, relationships even that like come to an end, sometimes these things like God allows these difficult transitions. And it's not a matter of like, oh, you did something wrong or you weren't enough or you weren't, but it's just God sometimes has to use these painful situations to transition us into the next chapter and the next season. And so I know that there are people who are going through this very thing and it's like, you know, he's actually, you know, so with the transition is a removal of our sense of comfort and security as, but it's also this thing, this catalyst to propel you into the next season, because we worship, we have this tendency to worship security and comfort and to want to stay where things are stable and where things are secure. You know, and I'm there, I, or I was there. Um, believe it or not, I used to be a very security driven person. I just thought I would work in my full-time healthcare job for like 30 years and that I would retire with a pension and just have a very like you know, normal, mediocre life. Little did I know that there was a prophetic call and that God had other plans for me, you know? And so, but the way that he transitions us from the ideas that we have of our own life and our own sense of, of well-being, well, first it came in seed form through prophetic words and people depositing things on the inside of me and being like, Jenny, I see this on you. I see, you know, and, and putting all these words of greatness and destiny that I'd never heard spoken over me my whole first 30 years of my life, you know, and then the seed starts to grow and then God starts to align us as we partner our faith with those words and step into, uh, you know, the next things that, that he has for us. And Jody, just for your comment about I'm glowing, you know, I, I, I found a Facebook filter that I like. I have a usual one that I use, you know, full disclosure here. I, I do have some makeup on, but you know, those Facebook filters, but I went to click and go live and they took away the one that I usually use. So I had to like scroll through. There are so many ridiculous filters. One of these days I should just pick, you know, one of the ridiculous ones and make this a funny video. But I was like, wow, there's filters that give you nose jobs and lip injections and change the shapes of your eyes and do all kinds of stuff. I just wanted to, you know, smooth things out, get few, rid of a few little, you know, you know, not that I have wrinkles so much, but 
<laughs> yes, you love my honesty. It's all about transparency. I have no shame in using a filter, but I'll be honest about the fact that I do. But um, yeah, no, so good. Why not look as beautiful as you possibly can? You know, why not? Why not? But um, you know, guys, so exciting. It's so exciting for this year. And I just, you know, so I'm four days away from the school launch four days from the first launching of the first Canadian Emerging Profit School, you know, and so there is like, there's so much excitement and there is like, there is just this, there is this like, this weight of destiny that I just feel like is just, is just sitting here and I am just like, I'm waiting and I'm ready to go. I, you know, I have been doing, I think I wrote 50 pages of teaching notes in the last couple of days, you know, just getting myself ready to go because, you know, it is, it is going to be a year for, for, for those of us who, you know, God is inviting us, you know, he's been shuffling and realigning us. Some of us, it's been the removal of relationships. I'm going to go back to what I was saying before, removal of relationships or removal of jobs or just like realignments or new assignments, or, you know, those of you who are joining the school, even something like that, you know, it's, God is positioning us for our advancement and he's positioning us and he's been, you know, shuffling us around so that we can find our people so that in finding our people, we can really find our purpose and we can advance into our calling. And that looks so different for each and every one of us. But you know what the Emerging Prophet School is about? It's about, you know, no matter where you're on in your prophetic destiny, you know, whether you are, you know, I have some people who've joined the school and they're just like, yeah, I just, I've operated in the gift of prophecy. You know, that's kind of this level basic level one, you know, they operate in the gift of prophecy. They want to operate in it more. There's others who are a little bit farther along in the journey. Maybe they're a trusted prophetic voice and they flow more in the prophetic, you know, and then there are people who are called and they know that they're called to the office of the prophet. And then there are other people who you know, are they're, they're not just called, but they're actually stepping out. Maybe um, they've been through my mentorship program. They're already really flowing in the prophetic and they're on that, on their way. And they're wanting to, you know, go towards their destiny and just discover more fully like, okay, the prophetic is in them, but they don't know if they're called to be a prophet or if they're just prophetic, because, you know, there's office there's the fivefold ministry, offense, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. So that's Ephesians 4. But then there's gifts of the spirit and there's prophecy in there. And so just because you can prophesy doesn't mean you're called to be a prophet. And in fact, there are people who can, who have the redemptive gift of prophecy and they are not called to the office of the prophet at all, but some of them can prophesy a lot better than, than some people who are actually called to the, the office of the prophet. So it's not a thing of position or, or anything, you know, I mean, God has this governmental structure and he chooses and gives gifts to each one as he wills. And, you know, and Jesus you know, the, the, the fivefold positions are governmental positions and they are given their, they are gifts of Christ. They are given by Christ. They are, you know, prophets are ordained as it says in Jeremiah, like from their mother's womb, like they are chosen. It's not something that you can just decide, okay, I want to be this, but maybe you're like, I don't even know where I'm at. Maybe you have these prophetic words and you're like, okay, well, you know, someone one, once upon a time told me that there was a greatness inside me, you know, and, and I prophesied or I felt like I was prophetic or maybe you feel like God talks to you, but have you found your place, you know, to be ministered to, to be mentored, to grow, to be nurtured and to really be intentional about going after, you know, the call. And so, you know, there's a real em emphasis in the you know, the emerging prophet school. So real emphasis on health, real emphasis on health and character. You know, um, I've been running a prophetic mentorship program for the last couple of years. And, um, you know, though I do lay some, you know, pretty strong new covenant foundations and we do talk about, um, heart healing and health. And I touch on those things. It's really been focused on the gift of prophecy, but now the school, it's the shift from just gift of prophecy training to profit training, you know, and helping people to understand like, what is a prophet? Are you called to be a prophet? And where are you called? Cause God is, he is, he is raising up prophets for every sphere of influence. There are, 
prophets who are artistic. There are prophets who are intercessors, prophets who are governmental, prophets who are teachers, prophets who are apostolic. There are so many different areas. And so, you know, so many people disqualify themselves because they'll look at, you know, they'll look at the prophet at the pulpit, you know, or the prophet on a Sunday morning in a church at the microphone and be like, I don't resonate with that. I don't feel like that's what I'm called to. Or maybe, you know, maybe you hear me prophesy over a lot of people and it seems a little intimidating. You're like, no, well, that's, I, I'm not like Jenny. I don't sound like her. I don't flow in the, the gift of prophecy like her, but don't disqualify yourself because I'm a Nabi prophet primarily. Maybe you're a seer and, and maybe your flow of revelation, it doesn't come primarily in the same way that, that I have this bubbling up, this gift of prophecy where I just open up my mouth in faith when I call someone's name and I just trust that the Lord is going to give me something to fill it. But maybe you're someone that God is speaking to it, even in dreams and visions in the night or giving, you know, other sorts of, maybe it's more like the nafta, the revelation that just kind of drops down like bit by bit. And you're picking up prophetic revelation over time. But you know what? I only say that is there are so many different ways and different, you know, we have different, um, different personalities and characteristics and different ways that we are going to uniquely express the heart of God. And we're going to like beautifully, you know, express him with our own personality because he's created us all so individually and he doesn't want us to all be, you know, so the goal of my, of the prophet school, you know, and, and the goal of emerging prophets, so you're gonna be a little more comfortable. Hello, Jackie and Diane, Amanda, Justina, Patty, Ann, hello. You know, so Keith says, you know, the goal in Emerging Prophets, it's not to just, you know, pump out a whole bunch of prophets that look like Keith Ferrante and sound like him and act like him and manifest like him and are fiery, ecstatic prophets with a breaker anointing just like him. You know, because we, even though those things are all good, but that's not all of our personalities. It's not all of our gifting. And so coming through the school, through the Emerging Prophets Ontario School, I want you to not just do it like Jenny does it and don't just come to look like Jenny. I'm not the cookie cutter version of, I mean, I don't need a whole bunch of Jenny clones as much as I would like a couple of them to help me out with all these things I've got on my plate. But <laughs> it's for you to discover like how your personality, how your gifting and who you specifically have a heart to, you know, there, every one of us has a story. We have things that we have walked through. We have things that we have overcome and through the things that you have walked through in your life, you have gained authority from the victories, the battles you fought, the giants that you fought, you know, like even David went through his season of training and, um, I'm being distracted because my, now this filter is like flicking out on me and I might have to turn it on. This is going to get funny. We might have to go filterless soon. Um, <laughs> but even David went through his season of training where he had to fight the lion. He had to fight the bear before he faced Goliath. You know, but it was in the fighting the lion and fighting the bear. And it's in the time, in the hiddenness, in the training, in the battles, in the things that we face, in the painful places that we walk that nobody knows where we are, where it's just us and God in the battle in front of us, that when we stick with it and when we overcome, that we gain an authority in those areas. And so different ones of us are going to have different areas of authority and different Areas where we can bring breakthrough to people because of the places that we have walked. You know, and so the world needs you to rise up in your own unique expression of who God has created you to be. Because there's only one of you. There's only one Lindsay Henderson. There's only one Justina Empringham. Only one Kara Welk. Only one Diane Wallace. And the world needs you to rise up and to partner with your prophetic destiny. You know, guys, and I had this, I've been listening lately to uh, Kevin, Kevin Zadai or Kevin Zadai on YouTube. And um, I listened to him all the way to Bracebridge this morning on my way to church. And um, I've been listening to him every week on my way to church and some days when I'm going to work. You know, and what I really like, what, the reason I feel so attracted to him and the message that he carries 
because it's this new covenant revelation of what, of the fullness of what Jesus apprehended for us and what he did on the cross in his crucifixion, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension, the fullness, this more, this greater understanding of what Jesus accomplished for us. And what Jesus accomplished for us, how much God passionately loves each and every one of us, and that like, you know, basically we're all his favorites. I'm his favorite, you're his favorite. And it's understanding, even though, you know, we're all his favorites, but understanding what does that mean if you have a parent, like my parents, my parents had 10 kids. They did a really good job at not making there be any favorites. <laughs> so there was never a sense of like, oh, she's the favorite, he's the favorite. Like there was none of that, at least from my perspective as the sixth born. I, I should ask some of my other siblings, but there was never a sense of like, oh, this one's favorite, this one's the favorite. But could you imagine what it would be like. And we need to imagine this because this is the reality. And when this is, you know, part of the quietness and settling over the holidays, because we got to get this deep on the inside of us so that we can launch and fulfill the fullness of the destiny. What does it mean to be the favored son or the favored daughter? It means that you have all of your father's attention all the time, that you have access to the resources of heaven because everything that was ever created, everything that he is, everything that's ever flowed through your hands, everything that is available, the silver on and gold, the cattle on a thousand hills, they're all belong to your father. You have access and he loves you so much. He loves you so much. He is crazy about you. The Bible says no good thing does he withhold from he who walks uprightly. So if we walk in obedience and we walk in surrender to him, there is no good thing that he is going to withhold from us. There is so much that he wants to put inside of us. And it's not just about what he wants to give us. There's so much more than that. But it's more than what he wants to give us. But it's about who are you? Who are you? Do you understand? And I'm going to point at the screen I'm preaching to myself because it's my own reflection that I've seen back in this camera, in, in this phone. Do you understand who you are? Do you understand what it means to be the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus? That you are not a sinner. That Jesus died not just to forgive your sins, but he removed them as far as the east is from the west. And he chooses the father chooses not to remember them anymore. They are gone. And not only are your past sins gone, but you died with Christ and you rose a new creation in Christ. You're not a sinner anymore. Guys, get that. You are not a sinner. To sin is not your nature. Jesus, raised from the dead, the firstborn of a new creation. And you, Angela Holoma, are a new creation. I just give a shout out. Angela is my newest and latest student who signed up for the EP Ontario School. And I'm so incredibly thrilled to have you as part of the school. I almost cried when I woke up in the morning yesterday and saw your email that you're in. I was like, oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Guys, it's going to be so, so incredible. But do you know who you are in Christ? Do you know what you have access to? You know, and I was listening to Kevin Zadai and he talked about, you know, he was a believer serving God and he actually had this experience where he died on the operating table and he went to heaven, you know, and he talked about, um, he was talking about how when he, when he got there and when he was with Jesus before he got sent back, he talked about like how, you know, even though he was serving God and he was doing like all, all these good things, like he was, you know, he was living a pretty good standard, you know, but it was like, he, he looked at what he had done in his life. And then he looked at what was written about him. And he said, you know, what he had done from what God had planned for him and written out. He's like, yeah, I was kind of, I did pretty well. I was like maybe at 35%. 
He'd done maybe about 35% of what was written in heaven, what was purposed, what was God's perfect design and intention for his life. And he'd fulfilled maybe 35%. But what happens when we figure out who we are, when we realize what it means to have this new nature in Christ, to understand that we are defined by being sons and daughters of the most high God, that our father in heaven is crazy about us. And even on our best days, even when we make a mess, even when we fall and skin our knees, even when we, you know, even if we sin, God forbid, even though it's not in our nature, that he loves us and he's crazy about us and that he is there to pick us up and put us back on our feet, that his love is so in moving, it is perfect. We can't add to it, we can't take away from it and that we just are, we don't have to do anything. He just loves us crazily, so perfectly, so abundantly. And for us to get this revelation and I'm you know, still preaching to myself here, You know that I am loved and I am accepted and I am valued, that my father has given me his full attention, that his eyes are always on me, that he delights to do good to me, that he, that no good thing does he withhold from me when I walk uprightly, when we walk in obedience. I mean, our obedience and uprightness don't change our love and acceptance but the withholding of the good things or the the freely giving of the good things. And there is this needfulness. You know, guys, you get some pretty great prophetic words and, you know, not just for me, um, but from, I'm sure all of you have prophetic words that you've recorded or you've written down and you have these destiny words. Some of the words just seem like so far out there, like how could that possibly, but there's something in your heart that is like, yes, I know it's true. Even though it seems so like out of line with my experience now, it's like, you just know, you're just like, yes, I know, I know that that, that that's me, you know, but it's like, sometimes there's this gap between like the word and our reality. And Part of the problem is because according as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So we have this problem because we got this discrepancy. There's this like unconditional love, acceptance, this newness in Christ. You know, Jesus made us the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, like this revelation, the truth of who we actually are, what Jesus has done for us. And then there's this problem of what a man thinks in his heart. Because God says we're this. But from the time we were little kids, we were programmed a certain way. And we made, you know, we, all sorts of ungodly beliefs because we were trying to figure out the world. And, you know, stuff happened to us that, you know, made us come to some negative conclusions and things that, you know, gave us unfavorable ways of thinking and acting and behaving. You know, and so we have these patterns and these beliefs about ourselves in our deservedness, our worthiness, our enoughness, whether we're loved, whether we're wanted. But God says we're here. You know, so we might have this, you know, and rejection is something that, you know, I have like had to deal with and go after healing. Like, you know, a lot of prophets, a lot of prophets, rejection is is really a big thing. Um, you know, and it's even in childhood, you know, and so it's like, what is that thing? I just said rejection because, you know, I want you guys to, you know, see like that I have had struggles and things that I've had to, you know, overcome, but it's like, what are the things, you know, because if I'm down here and I'm believing nobody loves me, wants me, and I'm going to be rejected because I'm not enough, but then God is up here and is like, Hey, you got this destiny and these are my plans and purposes for you. The thing is, he says, you're fully accepted and you're washed clean of your sin. You're loved. You're complete. But if you're believing these lies in your heart, as a man thinks in his heart. So I know people say God is all powerful, all know any, any, but it's like, you know, what's more, unfortunately, more powerful in the reality of how we walk out our lives is what we think in our hearts. And so we got to get this. And we got to let God, and this is what I shared this story before, um, 
but a couple, it was before Christmas. I think it was early December. And I woke up one morning because God has been increasing my, you know, my estimation of myself. And it's not, um, it's a, it's, it's a increase in your estimation. It's not, it's not about pride, but it's about understanding, you know, the fullness of who God has called you. And so God's been like, Hey, Jenny, I need to bring up your, your, you know, estimation of yourself. And one morning I came down and I always have my, my furnace set at 70 degrees. And I came down one morning and I looked over at the thermostat and it was 90. And I was like, thankfully my house was not 90. The thermostat just read 90. And I just looked at it as like this prophetic sign. And I really felt like God was saying, I have turned up your thermostat. I've turned it up. You know, and this is what he's doing. He's turning it up. No longer, you know, going to live down here like, oh, I'm just this, you know, sometimes I fail, sometimes I succeed, this average mediocre. Like, he's like, no, you're created in the image of my son. And so he's turning up and he needs us because, guys, we control the thermostat. So we got to turn it up. And we got to renew our minds and bring it in line with what he says about us. The truth, the truth of who we are. This is so key for us to be able to fulfill the prophetic promises. And I know I've talked to people and they're like, well, none of the prophetic words ever came to pass. And I don't even know if I believe in prophecy. And I think maybe, you know, maybe it's just new age. And because, you know, people say things and they resonate, but then they don't come to pass. And I'm like, what did you do with the prophetic words? Did you partner your faith with them? Hebrews 4 talks about, you know, the Israelites, some of them were given the, pro, you know, they were all given the promise, but it says some of them, it did not prosper them because they didn't mix their faith with it. So they didn't experience the fulfillment because they just took the word and they did nothing. But God is calling us to step up. God is calling us to step up, to step out. And this means you need to get out of your comfort zone. You cannot stay in your little familiar comfort zone and fulfill your destiny. And there is a shift that has to happen. You know, and I mentioned before, you know, I was much more, I used to be really security driven. I love routine. I was really happy to go to work the same time, five, like every day a week and just have like my routine, my cycles, my very normal, like average life because I thought that's all that was for me. And I was actually quite content, you know, but there was a shift that had to happen because I had to, you know, not be so worshiping security and comfort and like stability to be able to risk take and to, to be able to shift into risk taking and step into realms of possibility and become more, you know, destiny driven, more you know, that, that, that sense of significance, that sense of fulfilling destiny, that sense of like really going after, you know, those things that, you know, that are, you know, it's that sense of greatness that you have on the inside of you. And you know what? I just feel like some of you guys need permission to embrace that sense of greatness on the inside. There is, um, in Canada, there is this, this, um, sense of like, um, such a fear of being proud, but in the form, like, Pride is not good, but in the form of like a false humility, that's almost like a shame. And it's just, you know, the Canadian thing where we're always like, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm so, oh, excuse me. Oh, sorry. Sorry for existing. Oh, sorry that, I, you know, where we just even say sorry for things that we have no business saying sorry for because we didn't do anything wrong, but it just comes out of our mouth because there's this like false humility and this like smallness and this like keeping ourselves like down and low, you know? And so God wants to lift that off and he wants us to rise up with a humble confidence in who he said we are. It's true humility is being confident in who he said you are. Because when you are confident in who he said you are, you don't have to prove yourself. You don't have to prove yourself. You don't need titles. You don't need position. You don't need recognition from man. You don't have to strive. You can just be. You don't have to prove yourself with your prophetic gift. You just know that you are enough because you are a son or a daughter. And it's just this place of just being. And that's what we need to embrace.
Yeah. Because where he wants to take us, guys. What is... I just want to say hello to a few people. Barb Raymond, hello. Jackie Tessier, hello. Good to see you, lady. Heather O'Driscoll, good evening. Sherry Normore, Tamara Bali, Sydney Smith Berry, welcome, welcome. Marlene, good to see you guys. Thanks for tuning in. You know, because what is God doing? I swear I have to try and find that thought that I was on before I said hello to all of you. I was going somewhere and it was going to be really good. It's still going to be good. So I was talking about increasing our estimation of ourself, you know, and being really settled because we have to know, we have to know who we are. We have to know who we are. Because there are places that God wants to take us. And we're not going to get there if we are waiting, if we're waiting for permission, praise, approval, affirmation, you know, and especially if you're called to be a prophetic voice or to be a prophet, there are places he's going to send you and things he's going to have you do and things that you're going to have, that he's going to have you say, and you're not going to be liked. You're not going to everybody's not going to embrace the prophetic word. You know, a lot of people um, like prophecy because it is encouraging, comforting, exhorting, and building. And they like you to give them encouraging words. They like prophecy, but they don't necessarily like the prophet because the prophet carries an anointing that actually provokes, reveals, and stirs things up. You know, and so there is you know, this needfulness for us to understand like, okay, we are loved and we are accepted. We are so loved and we're so accepted. And nobody can take that away from us. And we just have to go after God. We just have to go after him. We have to go after him. And we have to be willing to take risks. And we have to be willing to step out and do things that don't make sense. You know, guys, I, you know, this is just a statement. It's not a complaint. I'm very grateful. I'm super happy about all of the things God has blessed me with. But like, I got a lot of things on my plate, like a lot, a lot of things on my plate. And, you know, so it might not fully make sense to some people, you know, like, like, well, why would you start a school now? I, I'll just share. I, I'm an ultrasound technologist. I'm still working. I'm still working a job. I'm single, you know, working a job. I'm in the Emerging Profits launch program. So I am like in my own profit education. I, I just made sure I wrote both my book reports over Christmas so that I was ahead of the game. And <laughs> I run a prophetic mentorship group. I have an essential oil business. I go to a church that, you know, is an hour and a half north, an amazing church, but it takes a lot of time for me to drive there and back. I got a lot of things on my plate. And so, you know, if I were to wait until like, oh, well, let's wait till things just slow down. Like, what, let's wait till things just seem a little bit more before I step out into the new thing that God has put on my heart. It's like, no, you just got to say yes and you got to go for it. And to jump in knowing that if he has called you, that he is going to sustain you and he will bring you. Yeah, Kara, like waiting for the food prices to be lower. <laughs> I mean, we could wait all day and we can get all upset about the food prices, but you know, I'm very happy to see the gas prices have actually gone, gone down a little bit. So there is hope. But, you know, or we can just take what God has given us and say, okay, well, you know, higher prices, he's given us the cre the um, the power to create wealth. And so let's step into what the truth of what he says about us. Who are we? We're his children. He's given us ask, access to the resources of heaven. Our daddy has all, all the silver, all the gold. He's got everything that we need. And so, you know, when he's asking us to do something, you know, and sometimes we reason ourselves out because we can't get past our rational type of thinking and trying to like, 
you know, way. So, you know, when I say that, because I think, I, I just have this sense that there are, a, I got a few more students out there. I'm super grateful. I'm super grateful for every student who has signed up already for the school, but there is just this sense inside that there are still a few more that have not in the school launches in four days. And if that is you, you know, I'm not going to call anybody out by name. I know, I hope some of them will watch the replay, but there are people that I have just such a sense that this is your time and you need to jump in because there is a special blessing that is going to be on this first fruits class this first Emerging Profits Canada class. This is the founding class. This is the groundbreaking class. So get in. Four days we start. So I have 10 students, Josie, who have already, who have already I've accepted. So there are a few more though. We've got a few more. Yes, Jacqueline, jump. Tell them to jump in. Jody Rogers, good to see you. Jody, my doTERRA sister. <laughs> awesome. So guys, all right, let me just do a little scroll through. I'll do a, a little bit of prophetic ministry. And I'm going to start with you, Jody. So don't go anywhere. And prophesy over with Jody for, you know, first. I haven't seen Jody for a while. You know, guys, I love doTERRA and I do still have an essential oil business, but as I've been launching the school and really launching it out in the prophetic, you know, I've uh, been really slow on the uh, essential oil game, but guys, it is really is a big part of everyday life and um, natural health is, is so where it's at. All right, Jacqueline's like, I'm not going anywhere either. Jody, and I saw Jody last at our doTERRA convention in September. So much fun. Jody, yeah. Yeah, Jody, I just see the um there is such a there's like <laughs> the Lord has um I see the Lord's really like there's this real softening. I see almost like a it's like a tenderizing of your heart that's happened over the last you know, in the last year and there's been this, and it's been part of the, it's actually been part of the upgrade that God has had for you. And it's like, I just see in some of the difficulties and the challenges that you've had to walk through, it's like, you know, sometimes we just want to have thicker skin so that we don't get like hurt by things so easily. But I just see that the Lord's actually been doing kind of the opposite thing in you. Instead of like thickening your skin, he's actually just been really been softening your heart. And I just see that there is this, such a deep compassion that is compelling you forward to do what you do. There's this like real deep, authentic desire to serve people and to help them meet their needs. And, and I just see this, like, it's like, there's been, there's been some kind of like, there's been a shift in your why and a shift even in, in, in why you're doing your business. And there's been a, sh there's been this needed shift that's had to happen and it's really shifted and changed. And it's like, it's going to actually really help to keep you in the game and it's going to help you to go the distance. And I just see, it's like, even as Jesus was moved with compassion and he was compelled and he healed. And I see you carrying a Christ-like compassion and it moving your heart and it compelling you to do what you do in selling, you know, in like essential oils and natural health products. And there's such a purity in it because it's like, it's really, it's so service driven and service like motivated. And I just see that, you know, there has been, such a cry of your heart for um, my people, like who are my people, where are my people? And I just see that like, and it's like, you've gone through so many shifts and so many realignments and, but it's like, I see you at sometimes kind of scratching your head, but I just see the Lord like with this higher vision and he's just like, Jody, I've got you. And Jody, and I just see the chessboard that he is, this chessboard that he is laying out before you. And I just hear him saying, my ways are higher than your ways. And girl, I've got you. 
I have got you. And I see divine connections and partnerships coming in. Yeah, and I see you stepping into a level Some things I don't want to say on, it's good, but I don't want to say it on Facebook Live, but I don't know how to word it. It's, um, there's some things in your heart. I'll just say that he's really, he's going to shift some dynamics because there's a desire in your heart to be able to stand on your own and to be able to like, To really, yeah, to really rise up as the leader that you know is on the inside of you. And so I just, I see a strengthening because you have allowed, even in the winds and even in the storms, you've allowed your roots to go down and they have gone down deeper. And it's like this last three years, God has taken you, like he is taking you from the shallow places. And even though, so you, you look at your last three years and, and it's just like, oh, but I haven't seen the, you know, you're looking at above the surface. Like I haven't seen the growth. I haven't seen the fruit. I haven't seen the, what I wanted to see, but God is like, Jody, the growth has been below the surface. And he says, I'm not, you are going to have the fruit, but he wasn't judging you based on this you know, by man's standard, but it was what was below the ground. And what was happening is your roots <clears throat> in these last three years have had massive growth <clears throat> and they've been going deep and they have been penetrating. And even though you haven't seen that outworking above the surface, you have gone to the depths and you have been anchored and you have gone deep in places so that now you are in a position that you are going to be able to be sustained for the long run. So I just bless you. I bless you and I just bless your business and I just call in. I call in those partnerships and those customers and those like-minded um, women who are going to walk with you and are going to go with you for the long run. Those ones also who need um, a mentor like yourself to be able to stand with them and to help them discover the potential that's on the inside of them. So I just bless you. And uh, I hope that resonates with you. I trust that it does. <laughs> Even if I stumbled over my words just a little bit there. You know, guys, and this is real life. Because, you know, sometimes, you know, especially when you're on Facebook, you're like, okay. You know, how sometimes you, you hear something, you see something, and you just want to make sure that you say what you're going to say in a way that is only going to feel encouraging and building. And, um, yeah, so... You can, you can watch me learn and grow as I prophesy over you guys. Because <laughs> you know, we're all in process. So much fun. So much fun. All right. Janine McCracken. Janine. Hmm. <laughs> Janine, you've been hanging out in the deep places. You've gone all the way down to the depths. You... And I see you in the hiddenness. I see you in the place you've gone so deep with God. And you have been, you know, it's like a couple things. It's been um, because you've been going so deep with him. And so it's like, you know, as you go deeper in intimacy, and sometimes it is the hard places of life that really push us down into those places. And I see you in this place kind of like, it reminds me of like um, in Genesis when, you know, when God cut covenant with Abraham and said that he would make him a great nation, but God, what God did um, was he put him to sleep and he cut, you know, it's like they, they laid out the animals, they cut them, they laid them out. And then God came and he passed through, like the torch passed through the parts because God was cutting covenant. But anyway, the, my point is that it said that there was like a darkness and a fear and a, a trembling that kind of came over Abraham. And it's like, I kind of have seen you in that place of like that kind of like, um, it's kind of like, I, I want to almost say like dark night of the soul, but not so much in a negative, but like kind of like a dark night, but kind of like it was for Abraham. Like it was a holy, um, like reverential fear kind of like going into the depths 
and there was that like holy fear and trembling that came upon him and it's like I've seen you in that place of like I just see you in that place of like before the Lord and it's like it's not been easy and it's you know you, you have this real true deep fear of the Lord and it is um, it's so precious and it's so beautiful um, you know but it hasn't come from walking through a bed of roses all the time and it's been in the challenges and the things that you have walked through and you're um, you know you've gone so deep and you've allowed him to to renovate so to speak some things on a foundational level and so he's brought some real deep shifts on the inside of you and it's like he's done some some inner work and I just see that he's arranged some things and he's really prepared you and and it's like remove some of I see some like removing of some of the like cracks kind of like the cracks in the foundation and I just see you now like this perfect having this like perfect smooth foundation this one that is it's like you're able to withstand so much pressure and I just see that you've been pressed you've been tested and there's been that hard pressing on every side and it wasn't a pressure to make you crack but it was a pressure that proved that you wouldn't crack and so it's just like I just see and it's like you know and it kind of like a you know I don't want to say Job but but I think of that conversation with God where he's just like you see my servant Job look at this one this one who is faithful and there's been kind of that thing too like look at my daughter like look at my Janine like look at her faithfulness and she's not going to turn away from me and so I just I see that and I just see you in the deep places but I also hear the call of the Lord to come out of hiding and it's like that call like Elijah come out of your cave Elijah come out of your cave because as much as you are called and you love the place of intimacy in the deep places, there is so much inside of you. That strong foundation and that which God has laid in you is now ready so that he can build. And so that what has become your, your floor, your, your, your foundation, it's actually going to be for others to be able to come and to stand on it with you and alongside and to be able to benefit from the strength of what you have to offer and to bring to the table. And so there is a needfulness for more of a, like, because your gift is so strong. Your gift is so powerful. And I just feel like the Lord is reminding you that the gift that's inside of you, it's not for you. It's for those. And I just hear that this come out of hiding, come out more into the open because there is more people who are going to benefit and need to benefit from the gift that is on the inside of you. Yeah. Because you have such a mama's heart and you have such a heart of compassion and God just really trusts you with his kids. He really, he trusts you with his kids. And so, you know, when you are rightly positioned, um, and it doesn't even have to be in like a hierarchical or like a formal kind of like, okay, I'm the leader and whatever. But even you, just when you find yourself in community and walking alongside people, there is just something that just like oozes off of you. And I see this like real new confidence um, in yourself and your ability, ability. Like there's something in your discerning, your discerner gift, um, your feeler, discerner that he's been shifting. And it's actually, I feel like, he's been, um, what's the word? Like teaching you how to rule your gift, uh, even more so that like you, you're better able to like really to take in the information of what you're seeing, what you're sensing, what you're, per what you're perceiving and, um, use it more in a way that is going to help you to like help other people or bring the breakthrough or help to shift the atmosphere or to give intel to people who need, you know, God, God's really giving you this ability, Janine, to see, you really can see people's blind spots and you see things in the spirit. And so, you know, there are some strategic people that he wants to align you with. And though you will be blessed in serving because you have such a servant's hearts and, and you know, that's what, what we do as leaders, we are servants first and foremost, but there are powerful people and leaders who need access to people like you who can 
who who can see things in the spirit realm and 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 just be like that spiritual ninja and you know that yeah it's that intercession and it's like what you can see and just that ability to break off and to really to help them so i just really see you being a strength to come and stand alongside people yeah so bless you and i i like your comments yes you are ready go for it you are so ready you're so ready this is your year. This is your time of launching. And, you know, God has got you. He's got you. Okay. And you're saying it's accurate. Okay. Awesome. I haven't talked to you for a little while. I do know Janine a little bit. She was um, in my mentorship group, I don't know, a year and a half, maybe, when I first, when I first started it. can't remember. Maybe you've been gone for about a year or so. But you did a couple rounds. But, uh, yeah. Awesome. So good. All right, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. This has been fun. It's been fun for me. Hope it's been fun for you. And uh, I'm probably, I'm going to say good night because I have to work in the morning. Got a busy day tomorrow. And if any of you are in my mentorship, the prophetic mentorship group, we're meeting tomorrow. It's 2024. We're meeting on Mondays now. Mondays at seven. So be there. <laughs> Um, so I'll see you tomorrow if you're in mentorship group and if you are sitting on the fence for the Emerging Profits Ontario School, get off the fence. Go to emergingprofitsontario.com, click the apply button. There are still a few more students who need to come in. We start on Thursday, January 11th, four days to go. So, so excited. And uh, yeah, have a good night, guys. Love you. Appreciate you. Blessings. Sweet dreams. <laughs>